In this video, we're going to wrap up our discussion on equilibrium, or wrap up chapter four. Uh, and we're going to be looking at what happens to equilibrium when we have two shocks. So in the last video, we only had one shock at a time. All right, what if we have two? So what if we have both curves shifting at the same time? All right, uh, well, we're going to have to deal with something that we haven't had to yet. And before we actually get into uh, what's going to happen uh, for all of these different occurrences, uh, I want us to just draw, or just want to look at something. All right. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to draw both the original supply and demand curves with our, actually, you know what? I thought that was going to be enough space, but I want this to be really big. So let's just go ahead and erase that. All right, so we're going to get a really big graph. All right, and I'm going to do my original demand and original supply curve in black. All right, but we've still got our supply, our demand, and our equilibrium, right? We've got those all set up. All right, so uh, now let's say that we're looking at an instance where we have a shock that increases supply and increases demand, all right? So uh, I'll just write that up here. So demand increases and supply increases. All right, I'm going to just, I'm going to shift uh, demand first. All right, so demand shift, all right, an increase that is a shift to the right um, as it is for a shift in supply. All right, so let's shift that one as well. All right, so when we do this and we go and we find the equilibrium, the new equilibrium, right? In this case, it's where our uh, blue demand curve and our uh, red uh, supply curve intersect one another. We're going to see an increase in quantity. And it's going to look like, or it might, or it might look like, that the price has not changed. All right. So if you are answering what happened to supply or what happened to price and quantity, you might say quantity increased, supply or price stayed the same. All right. However, this is not accurate. All right. Because what we've got here, these are just lines. They're not actually tied to any numbers. All right, so depending on how I draw these curves is going to affect the equilibrium. All right? So I'm going to actually change something real quick. So we're going to be changing that supply curve all right, a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and mark our quantity with red. So this is our kind of red equilibrium All right, and we say well looks like the equilibrium price is the same right as the original equilibrium price All right but when we do something like this right I would give you a shock like I, I have in the past, right? I might say that, you know, a new technology is invented that allows production to be more efficient, right? That's a shift to the right for our supply. That's an increase in supply, right? But do we know how much of a difference that shock is going to make, right? Do we know how much of a difference that shock to demand is going to make, right? And the answer to both of those is no, all right? Um, in, in these kind of very general looking at how different shocks are going to affect things, we don't know how much, right, in this context, right? We're just drawing lines, 
All right? So I could very well have drawn an increase in supply that looked like this, all right? That looked like our uh, red curve, all right? I could have also drawn an increase in supply that looked like this purple curve, right? And would have given me a different equilibrium. Right. I could have even drawn a increase in supply that looked like this. Right. So not a very large increase in supply, but an increase nonetheless. And we would have gotten a different equilibrium. All right, so this graph is a mess now, all right? It's very confusing. There's a lot going on, all right? You don't need to worry about everything involved in this graph, all right? The key point is that if we look at our equilibrium, all right, all three of these supply curves, all right, the red, purple, and green supply curves, all three of those supply curves show an increase in supply, all right? And feasibly could be the actual change in supply that we get from the shock, all right? But we don't know for sure. So when we look over here, all right, we say, well, we've got demands increasing and supply is increasing, all right? Well, depending on how much supply and how much demand changed, all right, we could have either gotten this by the way we drew it, this P star one that looks equal to the original equilibrium, P star two, which is below the original equilibrium price, or P star three, which is above the equilibrium price, right? So that's telling us that we aren't going to know just by, hey, there's a shock, what's gonna happen, right? Or there are two shocks, what's gonna happen? We're not gonna know what's happening to price, all right? On the other hand, if we look at quantity and we look at all of these different supply curves, and I guess I should draw our last one in here, although I don't think we really need it, all right? Then we can see when compared to the original equilibrium quantity, we see an increase in the quant equilibrium quantity for all three of those different supply curves, all right? And so this is going to be a a, a running thing with these, all right? When we're shifting both curves, one of either price or quantity, right? So specifically one of either equilibrium price or equilibrium quantity, one of those is going to move in a definite direction, right? The other one is going to be ambiguous, right? So in this case, price is ambiguous, quantity increases, right? Um, and so, we're gonna draw a little table just here in a second, kind of showing all of that, right? Um, and then just like the last one, we'll probably do one or two examples of actually showing that and then shifting and changing those curves, all right? Um, but again, uh, we're gonna have, depending on how we draw it, could make, you know, have a difference in what one of these looks like. Right? That's why we don't want to just rely on drawing these things, right? Because again, uh, most of the time when I do this, right, when I do the, the shifting, it, I, I draw them kind of equal, kind of I shift the curves an equal amount, right? And so it's always lining up with either price or quantity depending on which curves we shift, right? So that's again another reason why we don't want to rely on just the, the drawing, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and kind of make our box. All right, so uh, starting with probably the, the easier, uh, the easiest one because we just did it, right? 
I should have made these boxes a little bit bigger. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right, hopefully that's clear enough. All right, so when our supply and demand both increase, we're going to see that the equilibrium quantity is ambiguous, hence the uh, question mark, and the equilibrium quantity, excuse me, I think I might have said equilibrium quantity here. The equilibrium price is ambiguous, given the question mark. Oh, that's what I was thinking. All right, uh, and then the equilibrium quantity is going to increase. Uh, when our curves move in the same direction, so when they both increase or when they both decrease, price will be ambiguous. All right. um, and quantity will move in the direction of the curves. All right. So uh, when both curves are increasing, price is ambiguous, quantity is increasing. When both curves are decreasing, right then price is ambiguous and quantity is decreasing All right then uh, we go to our supply side all right i guess not really the supply side but when the curves are uh, doing different things all right so when supply is decreasing and demand is increasing all right this time a price is going to move in a definite direction all right and it's going to move in the direction of demand and quantity is going to be ambiguous all right so uh, again just to, to, to recap when supply and demand increase both, right, then uh, equilibrium price is ambiguous, equilibrium quantity is increasing. When supply increases and demand decreases, equal, uh, equilibrium price will decrease and equilibrium quantity will be ambiguous. When supply decreases and demand increases, equilibrium price will increase and equilibrium quantity will be ambiguous. And then finally, when supply decreases and demand decreases, equilibrium price will be ambiguous and equilibrium quantity will decrease. All right. Uh, so um, again, this is really the, the big important thing. Um, we're going to do an example or two, depending on how, uh, how much time uh, each one takes. Um, but uh, the, the ultimate thing is, what is the effect on equilibrium given these, these shocks, right? Uh, we want to know how, how are things, you know, how are the things that are happening in the world, how are those going to affect supply and demand, right? What can we kind of expect? All right, so let's go ahead and throw up the first example. So we're going to look at the market for tofu. All right, so here's our initial market. All right, so again, when we start from here, we're saying we're going to assume that we're at an equilibrium. Now we're going to be introducing two shocks. All right, these two shocks are the only things we should let affect this graph. All right, so again, all right, each shock is only going to affect one of the curves. Right. And we don't want to, we just want to stop once we move that curve, right? Once we identify, hey, this is this shifter that's going to apply to demand. I'm going to shift demand. Then we stop with demand. We go to the next shock, right? And that's probably going to affect supply. We're going to do that, right? Um, we don't want to kind of keep taking extra steps, right, that are going to lead us uh, kind of uh, down the wrong path.
Okay, so uh, here in kind of shorthand is our two shocks, all right, or are our two shocks. All right, so producers expect the price of tofu to increase in the future, and uh, the government starts a campaign aimed at decreasing meat consumption. All right, so looking at these kind of one at a time, all right, this first one, this is expectations from the producer's side. All right, so producers expect, that kind of gives it away. So expectations about future price. If producers think that the price is gonna be higher in the future, what's gonna to happen to supply today? Hopefully we said it's going to decrease. Right, because that is what we would expect, right? Um, if producers expect the price to be higher in the future, right, then their supply today is going to decrease because they are going to probably put some of uh, their product into reserves, right, or into warehouses, into storage, right, to sell them at that later date for a higher price. All right, then, uh, so then we're done with that shifter, right? We move on to the next one, right? Government campaign aimed at decreasing meat consumption, right? Uh, what's that likely to do, right? That's probably going to, this one, actually, I'll just go ahead and say it because we're running a little short on time, right? And we've already done one like this, all right? This would be another example of changes in tastes and preferences, right? If you're trying to pe get people to stop eating meat, right? And if you're successful, right, they got to have some protein, um, kind of replacement, right? And so tofu is probably one of the most popular options. So you would expect with that change in taste and preferences. So kind of a uh, change in taste away from meat and towards uh, kind of non-meat substitutes, right? Or I guess meat substitutes because you're substituting the meat, right? Um, and so there would probably be an increased demand for tofu. All right. So we get our new intersection alright and we can see that uh, price you know definitely changed right price increased All right one we could go back to our little chart or little table and we could say well you know we've got a decrease in supply we've got an increase in demand right that must mean that the price has increased and the equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. All right, so, um, or we could look at it, one, if you've got one that's like right on top of the other one, right, so if, if your Q star one is right on top of Q star naught, that's a good indicator that um, it's ambiguous because they're not gonna fall right on top of each other, or at least in this case, we're not gonna know that they did, right? There's no way for us to know that, all right. Um, don't always want to rely on that. You might, you're going to want to check that chart as well. All right. But um, there we have it. All right. So uh, the price, equilibrium price increases, equilibrium quantity is ambiguous. All right. And so that would be the end of that. All right. So uh, in probably in a homework or a test, what this is going to most likely look at is I would just, we wouldn't probably have a graph just because that's difficult with um, online stuff, right? Um, but uh, if you're taking uh, my class online, I suppose, uh, I might reuse these videos. All right, so if that's the case though, right, what you might be told is we're looking at the market for tofu, you know, um, below or two shocks report the effects on equilibrium, right? Equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So you'd need to identify that this, these curves, right? These shocks actually do what they're supposed to do, right? Uh, you're working at home, you might want to draw this out if that's helpful, right? You don't have to, but you might want to, right? And then tell me, all right, what's happening to price and quantity, all right? Our equilibrium price and our equilibrium quantity. All right, um, this is getting a little longer than I wanted it to, but that's okay. We're gonna do one more example, uh, and then we'll go ahead and call this video. All right, so 
uh, once again, um, apparently I just wanted to, to stick with themes in these notes because this one's about tofu as well. It's just nice to get a good theme, I guess. All right, so uh, we got our demand curve, we've got our supply curve, and we've got our equilibrium. All right, so uh, our shocks. All right, obviously, didn't mean to write that. All right. Um, All right, so uh, a shortened version. Uh, our first shock, a new process for making tofu quicker, right, um, is, is created, right? And then our other shock, uh, right? And then the other one is the price of tempeh increases. All right, uh, so for those of you that don't know what tempeh is, um, which I didn't until I created this problem, uh, it's just another alternative non-meat protein. All right, um, so, uh, you know, it's an alternative, right, hint, hint. All right, uh, so looking at these, we say, well, how did these affect each other? And I might not write down the actual shocks, I might just say them because I didn't give myself a lot of room. All right, but looking at this this first one, all right, the shock is that uh, the new uh, a new process for making tofu that's quicker than what was uh, that we originally had, right? Um, so that is textbook technological innovation, right? So if you've got a new process, if you've got something new that that allows you to make something quicker, right? Use less time to make a product. That's time you can use for other things, right? So that's going to see a an increase in supply, right? Then for this next one, all right, the price of tempeh increases, right? Well, here we've got, uh, we're looking at the market for tofu, right? Um, and so tempeh would be, definitely be a, a related good. Specifically, it would be a substitute, right? If this is another um, kind of meat alternative, tofu is a meat alternative, these would be considered substitutes. Um, and if the price of a substitute increases, right, the demand for the good we're looking at increases. Right, so the price of tempeh increases. Some consumers, you know, switch to eating tofu or eating more to tofu because uh, it is it is cheaper. All right, and then once again we get our new equilibrium. All right, see, once again, the way I draw these most of the time, it's gonna, the one that's ambiguous looks like they're right on top of each other. Again, that's not the only thing we should consider. Um, that's not the only thing we should look for. All right, but it, it is helpful. It can, it can be a helpful guide. All right, so when we have a, all right, so again, this is a increase in supply and an increase in demand, all right? And just like our chart says, when we have both curves increasing, right, we're going to see an ambiguous equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. All right. Again, this really, this is the end result we're looking for, what's happening to price and quantity with the shocks. Right? And so that is really what the focus should be on. Um, and this is because this is what I really want us to be able to do. All right, uh, but that is it. Uh, so in the uh, so this is it for chapter four on equilibrium. Uh, the next video that we will be um, or the next uh, topic we will be looking at in the next video uh, is our price controls. Right, so get excited for for price controls. Right, uh, we'll talk about those uh, in the next video, and I'll see you then.